In Project Zomboid, there are some places on the map that you just can't spawn at. Most players probably never travel to these places either. But today with the use of a mod called More Spawns, I'm spawning in March Ridge. It's a military town on the southwest side of the map. It's got some pretty good loot, but also has a very high population of zombies. I'm going to take it to the next level and max out zombies to insane population. It'll be 16x, the same as the CDDA challenge. And it will not be easy, but let's get it rocking. I started my spawn in a little townhouse, and I began looking around for any decent loot that I could use to smack the zombies with. Finding a seed bag off rip was pretty lucky. I also nabbed up a can opener to gain access to all the canned goods I would find. In the office, I found a Carpentry 1 book to boost my experience in carpentry so later I could build rain barrels. Not finding anything else, I was going to have to head outside without a weapon. There wasn't any zombies outside of the door, but there were some in the nearby area. I was cool with it because I didn't even have a weapon yet, and thankfully this would let me into the neighbor's house so I could look for something. In the upstairs closet, I found a hammer and a satchel bag, which would be perfect to put my loot in. That was all I found, so it was off to the next one. I was just kind of creeping along, hoping to not be spotted by the zombies. Hopping in the window, I was spotted by my first one, and I had to go outside and clap his cheeks. And then another one came to the door, so I had to let it in and repeat the process. In the upstairs closet, I found a crowbar, but it was actually pretty bad condition. There was a nice duffel bag, though, to replace my satchel, meaning I could hold more loot. Not finding anything else, I was going to have to move back in the other direction to the other townhouses. Finally, upstairs in the bathroom, I found what I was looking for, a nice pipe wrench. This will allow me to smack the zombies something fierce. Back outside and surveying the area, zombies were starting to move in, and I attracted another one. I knew I was going to have to move further southwest of the other buildings, and they're a little more easy to hold down given that it's at the corner of the map. And this is where I really started running into zombies. I knew I would have to chip away at them though so I could move on to the other buildings. I did level up my light footed and sneaking while I was doing this though. Now with a few zombies down, I could actually make my way into the next buildings. But this is where that 16x really started to come into play, as I was running into some pretty big packs now. I would still just have to chip away at them though and knock them down. I did loot a bulletproof vest off one of the zombies though. I also leveled up my short blunt along the way. I even got myself a garden fork so I can now plant those seeds that I got. Now with the lot clear, I was still going to have to chip away at the back side of it.
I did check the back of the car finding a gas can, but I was pretty sure I wasn't going to be driving anywhere. Checking the shed, I didn't really find anything, so I was going to have to make my way into some of the houses. Looking at the time though, I decided to make my way into the corner house. I thought it was a good idea to probably just wash myself up, eat some food, and read for the rest of the evening, capping out day one. On day two, I woke up pretty early. I spent most of the morning reading the carpentry book before going downstairs to get the TV so I could catch Woodcraft at noon. This put me past carpentry too, which I was pretty happy about. Now it was time to continue going through the houses to see if I could find any more loot. In the first house, I found a meat cleaver, but that was all I really found. In the second house in the upstairs closet, I found a crowbar, which was good enough, but I also found a hammer and a leather jacket that I could put on. In the third house, yet again, I didn't find much. In the fourth house, I also found nothing, and I was on a streak of bad luck. And the same for the fifth house. Back outside, I decided to push into the next building. But this is where things get kind of dicey as I started encountering a lot of the zombies that had pushed in from the street. A lot of the doors were bust down and I could hear zombies banging everywhere. Again, I could hear doors banging all around me, but in the upstairs closet, I finally found a good crowbar I could throw in the bag. In the next house, there was four zombies to kill, but unfortunately there was no loot. The pipe wrench finally broke and I had to resort to the crowbar. Back outside, this is when all the zombies finally started showing up. It got to the point that looking at the time, I was worried about my exhaustion and the tired moodle, so I actually decided to ditch this pack of zombies and run back inside for the night. I stood there for a second not sure what to do as they had bust down the front door of my house. So I decided to make my way into the neighboring house for the night. A zombie had spotted me and started banging at the door, but thank God it was only one. As it would turn out, this was the last zombie I could kill before I actually became exhausted. I grabbed the TV, went upstairs, and washed myself up before heading to bed. On day three, the zombies were still hanging out back, but I decided to wait them out so I could catch the carpentry show. This got me up to Carpentry 3, so very soon I could build rain barrels. Back downstairs, I was looking at the zombies through the window, and a zombie crawler came up to my door and started slapping it. I was just going to run out the door, but I actually got blocked by the wall. But it worked out because he just came inside, so I was able to smack him without the other zombies noticing. I knew I'd have to go out, so out the door I went. I wanted to loot the upper building, so I just started chipping away at the zombies.
In the first house, there was only one zombie, but there was also no loot. In the second house, there was two zombies, but also no loot. In the third house, there was only one zombie, but also no loot. It's almost like this is a repeating trend or something. I wanted to go further, but there was a big horde waiting for me. And I just couldn't handle that number by hand. So I decided to go around the corner and see if I could actually make it to the big house. But this meant I had more zombies to smack down. I thought there was only two zombies out front, but as it would turn out, where I couldn't see, there was a whole nother 16 pack. Again, I thought I would chip away at them, but this is where things got real sketchy. A zombie flanked me from the rear and my dumb ass hit the wrong direction running into the horde as I tripped and fell scraping up my leg. I had a pretty nasty limp as I scrambled to get the sheets out of my backpack and ripped them up into sheets so I could bandage my wound. Finally getting the sheets ripped, I went to bandage it but just didn't have enough time so I had to try again. This time I was successful and I got back to business. I got them cleared and I wanted into that house. At this point though, I reached my limit and was exhausted. So I decided to go back to the house and get some water and some food and turn in for the night. Maybe I'd hit it in the morning. On day four, I was back at it. I wanted into that house. I still needed a saw, so it was crucial that I got in there. I noticed a new horde had moved in, so I decided to go around through the houses and try to make my way through that way. And immediately I was noticed and I had to begin fighting. The second horde started moving in, so I had to fight them too. I got in the house, but the closet was empty. But over in the wardrobe, I found my saw. I headed back through the houses and over to the house I was staying at. I went to the neighbor's house to get some food and went upstairs to wait out the woodcraft show. It got me to just under level four, which kind of sucked because it was actually raining outside. I went back outside and started clearing all the zombies in the area because I wanted to be able to disassemble furniture to start putting up barricades.
now with the zombies clear, I could actually take apart some furniture in peace. I took the planks over to the corner house so I could rebuild the door that they had actually broke down. I figured the corner house would be a little bit safer, and it'd probably be easier for me to hold it down. I built the new door and I took a table out front to put in front of it. I went back outside to clear the area more as I wanted to put barricades on the windows. I got one barricade up on the back window and went out front to start clearing there. It may just be one on the windows, but I felt a little safer at this moment. I continued the process of taking apart furniture so I could put more up. I got one more up on the front window and had to do some more clearing. Now I could at least put a couple more up on the front. With it just about bedtime, I decided to wash myself up before turning in. On day five, I wanted to continue the process of putting up the barricades, but when I went back outside, I had to do more clearing. Now with the area clear, I could actually take apart some more furniture. I would need a lot more nails and planks. I caught the Woodcraft show at noon and this took me past level 4, so I can now actually build some rain barrels. I continued taking furniture apart and even grabbed a little bit of food on my way. Next it was back to putting planks on the windows. Back out front I had some more zombies to clear. My crowbar broke, but luckily I had one in the backpack. At last, I was finally able to put on that barricade. I continued grabbing some food from the other kitchens, and then I had some more zombies to deal with. I took the refrigerator upstairs because I was actually planning for the helicopter event. And then, more zombie clearing. Throughout the evening, I gathered up more food and took it back to my house. But first, more zombie clearing. This late in the evening though, I was ready to wash up and go to bed. On day six, I decided to take a pretty big risk. I was just gonna push through the day. The helicopter event could happen, but I wanted to get more barricades up, so I figured I'd just risk it. I kept gathering planks and taking them over to the house. And more zombie clearing.
At this point, with not much time left in the day, I decided to head back to the house and take apart some more furniture so I could finish up those barricades. I wanted to get some planks on the insides of the windows and the door. And that would just have to be good enough for now as it was time to head to bed. On day seven, I took an even bigger risk. More zombie clearing. planks, more barricades, more zombies, barricades, but then I made some spears. With well, it now late in the evening, I decided to cook up some shrimp and a pork chop and start getting ready for bed. On day 8, it was a nasty storm outside, but I decided to take a little risk. I went outside and built a rain barrel and also started planting my seeds. Zombies. From here with the possibility of the helicopter event happening, I just stayed inside all day. Late in the evening it still hadn't happened so it was time to turn in. On day 9 I could hear the whirring of the chopper blades. I felt pretty safe so I just sat in front of the TV just waiting for something to happen. Luckily all my preparation brought no zombies to my house. The helicopter only made one pass and so I just chilled out for the rest of the day. On day 10, I went outside to see what the damage was. Luckily, there was just a few zombies in the area. It wasn't actually all that bad. I looked at the carnage that I brought down on this apocalypse and it got kind of crazy. Old Chad Nimbletoes had killed 288 zombies in just nine days. We were on day 10 and I figured he survived. But that's enough for this video. Thank you for watching.